Welcome to this installment of Foglight Advanced for Databases, a day in the life of an Oracle DBA. I am Chris Hutchinson, a Senior Systems Consultant at Quest Software. This installment assumes that you are familiar with the architecture of Foglight Advanced for Databases and have an introductory understanding of Foglight Monitoring and 24 by 7 Workload Analysis. This information is provided in shorter introductory videos entitled Foglight Advanced for Databases, The Big Picture, a brief primer, and finally, the perfect couple. This video will walk you through the software to show you a day in the life of a DBA utilizing Foglight to keep their databases in top condition. Let's have a look at a live lab environment. Let's go ahead and log into our software now. I'm going to log into our demo environment. Foglight uh, is based on different security protocols. You can use LDAP, Active Directory, and all of the dashboards are going to be particular to the user login. In this case, we have a database login, and it's going to show me the database screen. Foglight is an AJAX Web 2.0 application, which allows us to look at the entire app. Foglight, again, is not just database focused, but looking at the entire application stack to eliminate finger pointing get data correlation on the entire stack so that we know where the transaction is slowing down, whether it's .NET, Java, looking at an end user performance, GeoWare, looking at the physical host, whether they're VMware or physical, looking at different ERPs, etc. And so it's designed to work like a thick client. Uh, the interface is asynchronous, meaning the data is being pumped in. Before I make the actual request for that data, I can do drag and drop dashboards. I can look at different things that I want to that are completely customized to myself. That's one thing that's nice about Foglight. It's the very latest in technology and all the stuff that we are supporting or developing on to create new functionality for comes very quickly as a result of J2EE. So we're focusing on databases today, uh, focusing on Oracle in particular. So we're going to look at the databases dashboard. Now the databases dashboard shows all different database flavors. If that's something that you want to do, we're going to be focusing on a Oracle. The global view is going to alert on databases that are having the most problems based on severity, uh, either on uncleared or unacknowledged alarms. And we've got normal, which is green, yellow, which is warning, orange, which is critical and red, which is fatal. And they're all different shapes for color blindness. We just want to make sure that we're being very thorough. And so you have the understanding of what you need to do first. So we're prioritizing what you need to do to fix database issues. We've got this understanding of mouse over. So when you look at a particular metric, you may not want to click into it. You may just want to mouse over it and bring the data up to allow you to see it. And what this screen is, is doing is it's showing you a nice thing that we call Intel Profile. So for any particular metric, in this case, average active sessions or the number of sessions that are being actively serviced in memory and disk, CPU, what have you, um, they're going to start queuing as you get latching, locking, and that type of activity, those session, average active sessions are going to rise. And that's where you're, you're going indi to indicate uh, CPU bottlenecks or, or database bottlenecks. How do you tune those statements to operate in a quicker fashion of time and so that you don't start having these problems? That's what this whole product is for. But what we show you with Intel Profile is what is considered normal for that time of day, that day of the week, and that week of the month. And you might ask yourself, how do they do that? Is it just an average? Because Saturdays are slower than Mondays and Tuesdays are busier than Wednesdays. Well, we're looking at a 14-week running average. We're breaking it up into seven days and we're giving you an accurate representation of what is the normal activity for whatever metric it is that you're monitoring for that particular time frame and you can see it's not just average active sessions here but it's also CPU we've got a little blue line that shows what our average is memory wait all the weight events we're going to be giving you that metric so that sets it apart from the competition allows you to prioritize your tuning efforts and figure out where you're going to go next if you've got a database problem if you see that your activity is way outside of what is normal for that particular time frame, then you, you decide to drill into the database and that's clicking into the home page. And I'll let's quickly do this for one of these instances and just show you. As mentioned before, we draw pictures of the database. We draw a picture-based representation of an Oracle instance. The user sessions on the left-hand side making a request in the PGA. And then from there, those, uh, those processes go into the memory 
let's see if we've got the answers in memory. If not, we got to go to disk, and then we go to the physical subsystem and back. And we're going to give you an understanding of where you stand from a normal perspective, looking at your workload, average active sessions. So if everything here is green and looking within the normal, move on to the next one. Don't waste any time. Save yourself the time. Save yourself the problem. And you're using pictures to do that. That's the best part. It, you're not having to look at numbers and metrics and having to just try to figure all that stuff out. It's a smarter way of doing things. Work, work smarter, not harder. Now, anytime you see these yellow or orange instances, you can mouse over and look at the executions and say, what's going on here? It looks like my database is running at less than four average active sessions per second, which is pretty low. The number for this time frame, the last 60 minutes, as I see it up in the right-hand side here, is 1.49. I know my database can handle more than that, so I'm not going to worry about this from a performance perspective, but I'm going to see that the number of executions at this time, for that time range, is slightly higher, or in this case it says statistically significantly higher than the typically observed, 1.43. If you look at that number, 1.57, 1.43, that is a, a significantly, or from a statistics perspective, significantly higher. Uh, once you get into more active databases, this is just a demo environment, you're not going to start seeing that color change until something really becomes out of whack. But what that allows you to do is visually understand where you need to make changes and uh, when you need to do things. That is the value and the benefit of this higher level of monitoring, fog light monitoring for databases. Included in this is the ability not only to get this real-time screen or this historical screen based on any time that you want by just dragging and dropping or typing in a time frame. Do I want to go back an hour or two hours? What do I want to do? I'm very lightweight. Um, gives me uh, that helicopter view of what I really need to understand. The next section that we're going to be discussing is going to be not looking necessarily at the statistics being provided by the database, uh, the V$ dollar or the X$ dollar views, but more of the, the data that we're collecting from the memory segments, getting down more into a much more granular level of the SQL workload, the who, what, when, where, and why, of the activity and being able to pump out reports in less than that, those three or four clicks to move on to my next problem. I don't want to be stressed out with all these different fires that I'm trying to put out. You know, as a DBA, that's a, an extremely risky part of the job is the stress. So what these both these tools do is give me the ability to to go at diagnosis from a normal typical perspective, top sessions, top SQL statements, looking at the actual session tables to the ability to get down to a granular level of the memory scraping. One thing that's nice about the memory scraping is that it eliminates our need to be able to log into the database. So as an OEM user, when the database slows down, it's hard to make those connections in. It's hard to pull the physical data from AWR or ASH out of the, the local host because it's, it itself is struggling and you're trying to make those connections and you're not getting data back so you just don't know and and your boss says give me tell me what happened and you can't because you can't get into that data by look, doing memory scraping and by looking at it from a higher level you don't need to log into the database you're going to be able to give up to the minute metrics up to the second metrics of what happened when that database went down because we're sampling from memory so our next segment is going to be not looking at the traditional database metrics like we are right here by drilling down into the traditional dynamic views, but actually going in and looking at performance metrics as they are being told by performance analysis. That's our agent on the street, the uh, collector demon that's running at multiple times per second with very low CPU, zero I.O., and very little memory. So what I begin to do now is try to investigate based on the picture that I'm looking at on my screen what is causing the problems that are making my different uh, data flows or icons turn different colors of severities? Buffer weights, CPU weights. Um, keep in mind that everything is related to my overall workload and what I understand that my database can handle. In this case, the in this demo environment, the average, average active sessions are slightly low, so I know that I don't have a particular issue or problem here based on the amount of transactions my database can handle but I do want to get in and understand what's happening to buffer weights and CPU weights we'll just use that as an example 
So clicking on investigate and performance analysis, what that allows me to do is say, you know what? I want to go in and understand all of the statements, users, the client machines, the top statements, everything that's contributing to a particular problem that I'm seeing on a whole from that particular instance. So the data that I'm looking at now is data that is not typical. It's not that we're grabbing from the sessions tables or from the dynamic views. We're not actually logging in the database, but we're sampling from memory at hundreds of times per second literally with that 3% overhead to the CPU and that is something that's hard to comprehend at first unless you understand that what we're doing is memory scraping and not actually logging into the Oracle database subsystem we're not contributing to any workload that's already there uh, the, the fact that the database is already struggling we're just simply taking the remnants of what's coming up into memory and we're reporting on it so it's a it's a beautiful solution so at that point I, it, it, because I clicked on analyze it's gonna take me right to the time in question that I was looking at before in Foglight and it's taking me into the granular data of all the SQL statements PL SQL blocks programs OS users database users etc contributing the most to a particular type of workload and so there's three different areas that we focus on. One is this instance view, or is it SQL statements? Do I want to look at SQL statements? So I select those, and it shows me the top SQL statements contributing to overall workload for that time range. Or it, do I want to look at the top database users that were in the database at that time frame? It's PAO Works. My, my CFO was in the database. I want to understand what he was running. If he's the one who's complaining, I want to know what SQL statements that he was running that could have possibly been running long and why they were running long. I want to be able to give him a, a concise answer. That's, that's how I protect my job. That's what I do. And so by understanding the top statement that he's running for a particular time frame and what it's contributing to, in this case, if I mouse over it, I can see that it's basically just CPU usage by drilling into the weight events but I can look at the, his average SQL response time, 1.43. I know there's not a problem. So if what he's telling me is that he's waiting for this information to come back, I can definitively say that it's not the database. It's taken 1.43 seconds to service that request and get it back to him. And I can very quickly right click, run a report, and I'm off to my next problem. And think about the stress that you have when somebody asks you, uh, can you recreate or what happened at 6 a.m. Uh, earlier this evening? And you say, well, you know what? Let me check real quick for you. Let me go in and just look at the last six hours. You don't need to tell them that, but this is what the, the tool allows you to do. And if the problem happened here, you, you simply isolate the time frame and you say, well, let's see what happened between 4 and 5. And... And if it's the particular user, if it's a CFO, you say, well, let's look at his activity, his SQL statements that he ran during that time. And, and, and keep in mind that I'm getting this information from memory, less than 3% hit to the CPU. I'm sampling it up to 300 times a second. And it's going to say, what is the top statement that he ran during that time frame, 430 to 450, at 2,453 seconds of active time and I await. But what is it uh, on the big scheme of things? And in this particular perspective, it looks like he took the average active sessions on the instance from you know zero to a, a particularly high amount. So from there, I right click on the statement and I see what can I do to help him out? Analyze IO, find out what segments he's hitting, find out if he's using indexes, whatever the top data files are having problems. Is it on a slow SAN subsystem? Is it on a slow disk? I look at the execution plan history. Has the execution plan changed? Um, if I have the SQL optimizer from Oracle, or from Quest actually for Oracle, then I would uh, run this Tune SQL, and Tune SQL would run this statement and offer up indexes and and different rewrites so that I could say, you know what, try this. That might help you out better. If the execution plan has changed, if he's dropped an index it'll show it in this case it's saying there's been no changes that we've detected so he's been basically running an index range scan 
and uh, for some reason for this particular time it's running a little bit longer than maybe he'd like but you've got the total flexibility and ability to understand how this particular CFO's statement or activity has affected you over time you simply select whatever it is you want from the left hand tree navigation view based browser and you're looking at workload you could be looking at disk IO network database buffer last re redo weights other whatever it is you're looking for whether it's locks I mean you have total carte blanche and the time frame and you say you know what let's go out and look at this activity from this select based on that user for a lot larger time frame 30 days is this has the CFO been running this statement more times in this this one particular instance where he might have had problems and I want to understand where it falls from a level of severity against all the other day that I, that I'm collecting and find out if this is something that if I tune this statement if it's truly gonna help performance well on the grand scheme of things in 30 days look at the levels it's so low that it's not even something you want to register so you're able to say that your average SQL response time for your statement over the last 30 days is 1.41 seconds. So if you're having problems getting it back, it's not the database. It's your application or whatever you're using to run it. And you can generate a report really quickly on that to tell him exactly that information. And you're doing that within five clicks. What does that mean to you? That means that you can go through and understand any time period of information that you've been collecting with less than 3% hit to the CPU with no logging into the database, no intrusion, even when the database is being completely overwhelmed and say, I am on top of my job. I know exactly what's happening and I can tell you and give you reports and say, this is what's happening and maybe this is what you can do better maybe this is the other activity these are the other users that are contributing to different types of weights here's the top statements that were happening at that time that you were experiencing problems and you'll notice that these graphs change every time you select a different metric on the left hand side and you can say you know for that for that time range we had this one statement in the top I just chose SQL statements that is that is chewing up a lot of resources. It's uh, the number of SQL uh, the number of executions is three million at two point oh three seconds per average SQL response time. You know what if I could go in and tune this statement? Maybe that would help out my CFO. So I go in and I analyze the I/O. I chew, look at the execution plan history, and what it looks like here to me is that it went from a uh, if I go and look at the last change, it went from a full table scan or an index range scan, scan index to a full table access. So there's one easily identifiable area where I can go in and tune. So I'm going to go in and right click, tune that statement, and hopefully within this instance, I will improve the performance. And it looks like it's constant. It's something that this is a, a big fix where I'm going to improve performance and I can do this across database platforms performance analysis works the same for Oracle DB2 and SQL Server and I don't have to be there I, I can be at lunch I don't have to be stressed out I lose the stress because this tool gives me the ability to dial up anytime look for any type of lock any type of weights in this case if I wanted to look for locks that happened during that time I can find those. I can find the sessions. I can find the statements. I can find the users that were affected. I can find the client machines. It's all within three to five clicks of understanding what is my what is get, getting locks or latches or mutex weights or or what have you. But I'm able to do it in a very quick fashion, and I'm able to look competent. I'm able to give those reports out and I'm able to move across the infrastructure problems resolved and spend more time tuning and less time firefighting. Thank you for your time in this video today looking at Foglight for Oracle, A Day in the Life of a DBA.